running a rainbow. But if I like, I could use my connection to 6i on my phone, and I will make them blue. In 2017, the Niagara Falls Illumination Board hired a consortium of companies to install a $4 million LED lighting makeover. We now have RGBW control of all three waterfalls thanks to 1,400 individual luminaires positioned at three different locations on the Canadian side. A Pharos LPC is the main controller with three pathway vignette systems providing local backup to the three individual lighting positions. All of that, plus a network of path ports and via switches, are connected to the 6i cloud for remote monitoring and management. On a daily basis, the lighting operators control every aspect of the system live using a custom touchscreen interface. On occasions, VIPs and the public are invited to the tower to change the color of the falls too. Otherwise, the system runs autonomously. So looking at a map to see where we are, the Niagara River flows north and empties Lake Erie into Lake Ontario and splits the two countries along the border as shown here. And these would be the Canadian Horseshoe Falls and these would be the American Falls. So if we scoot around in 3D and just fly right underneath, do duck your head underneath the Rainbow Bridge, that's a good close-up look of the American Falls. And on the right-hand side there, that's the Bridal Veil vale Falls. And right across the river, this little shed here we call the bunker and this is where a whole bunch of leds are that shine on the american falls that's me kind of looking off into the distance wondering what's going on anyways let's scoot up the river a bit further here get close to the horseshoe falls oh it's wet it's noisy it's loud here we go and don't no no dangerous back up back up back up if we go up high we can see an old surge tank in what we call the tower and this is where most of the lights light the, the horseshoe falls. So again, a big array of LEDs. There's me doing a pretty bad selfie. And if we scoot up the river to the visitor center, there we see Table Rock. There's a restaurant under there. And on the roof is another array of LEDs that light the center of the falls behind the omnipresent plume of mist that obscures the lights from the tower. If the heating elements fail, that's what they look like in the winter. So that was a bad day. So overall, you can see the three locations, several thousand feet of fiber optic cable to connect these together. So schematically, this is what the network looks like. Outlined are the three locations, the tower control in the center, Table Rock upriver, and the bunker down in the gorge to light the American Falls. Connecting things together are the fiber optic cables here and here. The LEDs are powered by many racks of drivers, one driver for each color, 1,400 in total. Deep inside the racks are the Eden Pathport gateways providing DMX and RDM control. These in turn are powered by the three VIA switches that live on the fiber backbone. When everything is hunky-dory, the Pharos is in control of the entire system and the operators can control each waterfall's lights individually or in unison using the touch screens. But when a raccoon, cute, chews through your fiber cable, not so cute, a local vignette will ensure that the lights are on. This failback system works neatly by taking advantage of SACN's priority scheme and the Pathport's ability to arbitrate and crossfade between multiple sources simultaneously. The Pharos uses the default priority of 100, whereas the vignette in the tower backs up the whole system by bracketing the main controller with a priority of 90 for automatic fallback and 110 for the Pharos override. Then at both of the other locations, their vignette rides further back at a priority of 80 in case of communication failure with the tower, but also have the option for local override at 120. This mode is particularly handy for the maintenance staff. Where this whole system gets really interesting is the connection to the 6i cloud. During normal operation, the staff can securely check to see that everything is online and healthy. Using the web interface, they can explore the network, they can check uptimes, version numbers, port interconnectivity, and the health of the 1400 RDM drivers. Individual devices can be rebooted or power cycled 
and offline editing can be done from home and new show files can be transferred to the falls using the connection to the cloud. And if Rocky Raccoon pays another visit, 6i will email staff to let them know that part of the system has failed and hopefully dispatch a maintenance crew during daylight hours so the falls never go dark. The 6i portal also allows us to build a much friendlier control panel to operate simple tasks such as changing the color of the falls. The advantage of this is that you can do it anywhere, even on a smartphone. 6i offers a superior user database giving only access to those parts and functions of the system granted by the administrator. And two-factor authentication always ensures that only the right people have access. This project has been a huge success, offering a wealth of new features to ensure improved control and design flexibility for the falls. As such an important tourist attraction for both the United States and Canada, the Niagara Falls Illumination Board wanted the most technologically advanced system to deliver maximum uptime and unparalleled visual effects for its visitors.